Hello students, in the part 1 of pharynx, we discussed about the structural organization of the wall of pharynx in which I told you about the mucosa, I told you about the submucosa where you have the modification is known as pharyngobasilar fascia and then we discussed the outermost fourth layer that is your buccopharyngeal fascia. In today's lecture, we will discuss the third layer that means between the buccopharyngeal fascia and pharyngobasilar fascia, we have the muscular layer of the pharynx. Now, when you will see the muscles of the pharynx, you have the two terms. One is known as constrictors of the pharynx and another is longitudinal muscle of pharynx. Now, constrictors of pharynx are the outer circular layer of the pharynx and longitudinal muscle layer is a inner layer of the pharynx. The another important thing which you have to understand that constrictors are ring shaped muscles but the important thing is that it is a muscular tube which is open from the anterior side. Why it is open from anterior side? Because anteriorly you have the three opening nasal cavity, oral cavity and laryngeal cavity. So because of the oropharynx, nasopharynx and laryngopharynx those are communicating with the your muscular tube you have the deficiency of constrictors in anterior aspect and their anterior free margins will get attached to the bones or the ligaments which are present on the neck. So let us start with the constrictors of the pharynx. Now when we will talk about the constrictors these are the three curve sheet of the muscles and they are renamed as a superior, middle and inferior constrictor from above downward. These constrictors supplement by three small longitudinal muscles. So you will have the three inner muscles which are known as stylopharyngeus, palatopharyngeus and salpingopharyngeus. So there are total six muscles in the pharynx, three constrictors and three longitudinal muscles. The constrictors overlap posteriorly from each other and they are telescoped to each other like three stacked cup. What does it mean? Telescoped means that the lower part of one muscle is covered by the upper part of the lower muscle and it is something like this. Now this pattern is known as telescopic pattern but the important thing is that this telescopic pattern is seen only in the posterior part not in the anterior half because I told you that anterior half is deficient where you have the communication with the nose, oral cavity and larynx. So that's why when you will see the pharynx, you are having this telescopic overlapping arrangement in posterior part of the pharynx only. So the pharyngeal constrictors are the three important muscle those overlap each other in the posterior part. But the important thing is that the upper border of inferior constrictor overlap the lower border of the middle constrictor and the upper border of the middle constrictor overlap the lower border of the superior constrictor that is known as telescopic arrangement which you can see in this diagram that this is the inferior constrictor, this is the superior constrictor and this is the middle constrictor. You can see the upper border of all the three constrictors. You cannot see the lower border of superior and middle. You can see the lower border of the inferior constrictors only because the superior is overlaid by the inferior uh, middle and middle is overlaid by the inferior constrictor. Which you can see in this diagram also that this is the posterior part where you have the continuation of the muscular tube. But anteriorly the tube is deficient in places where you have the bony attachment and in the posterior part because of the continuation you can see that this is the upper border of the middle constrictor overlapping this part of the inferior const superior constrictor in the same way this is the part of the middle constrictor which is overlapped by this part of the inferior constrictor. So this telescopic arrangement or overlap of the muscles is seen only in the posterior area of the pharynx not in the anterior aspect of the pharynx. Now the muscles does not extend up to the base of the skull. I already told you this in the first part of the pharynx that there is a clear cut gap present between the base of the skull and the superior border of the muscular tube. So this is the most important thing which you have to keep in mind that there is a gap because the muscle does not extend up to the base of the skull and here the immobile wall of the nasopharynx consi consists of the rigid membrane that is known as pharyngobasilar fascia. 
in my class of the pharyngobasilar part 1 i already told you that this pharyngobasilar fascia is become rigid to maintain the patency of the nasopharynx for the breathing purpose and you have to understand that this pharyngobasilar fascia comes out from the inner side of the constrictor and it will go to take attachment on the base of skull that means the base of skull is not having attachment with the superior border of your muscular tube it is only the fascia that will get attached to this superior border the base of the skull so this is the fibrous thickening of the submucosa and that fill the gap between the skull and the upper border of the superior constrictor and you can say that it is also one of the fourth fibrous cup so if we will see this is the superior constrictor this is the middle constrictor this is your inferior constrictor and if you will fit one more cup then this will be our five pharyngobasilar fascia you can see that this fascia now will go and set on the base of skull so it is sometime considered as a fourth fibrous cup and if we are using the word fibrous cup then it will be at the top of this pharyngeal tube then what is about these constrictor so first we will discuss the superior constrictor so whenever you are having any muscle you always think about the origin insertion so what is the origin of superior constrictor now you have to understand that we are rather than using the origin we should say that what are the bony attachment of this circular muscle because there is no deficiency on the posterior side the deficiency is present on the anterior side so the anterior margins of any ring will not remain free they need some kind of the fixation in term of the attachment so when you will see the anterior attachment of the superior constrictor fibers there are five places from which the fibers are arising and taking a circular course so the first is the lower part of the posterior border of medial pterygoid plate now this is the medial pterygoid plate now you can see that these fibers are arising from this part of the lower portion of the medial pterygoid plate and here you have a bony projection is known as pterygoid hemulus so the fibers are arising from the very lower most part of the pterygoid plate with the hemulus then you will have the pharyngobasilar fascia so the fibers is also taking place outside the pharyngobasilar fascia because if you will see the layer you have the mucosa then you will have the submucosa then you will have the muscle layer and pharyngobasilar fascia is a modification of the submucosa so but obviously it will take origin outside the part of pharyngobasilar fascia then you will have pterygomandibular raphe now this is the pterygomandibular raphe now this pterygomandibular raphe extends from the pterygoid hemulus to the inner side of the mandible behind the third molar and this pterygomandibular raphe will give origin posteriorly to the superior constrictor and anteriorly it will give origin to the fibers of buccinator muscle and on this whole area on outer side you have the outermost layer is known as buccopharyngeal fascia that is adipose layer which not only cover your superior so constrictor but also cover your buccinator muscle so this is the important thing which you have to understand it is a major origin of your superior constrictor if somebody will ask you what is the major origin or from which point the maximum fibers of superior constrictor arises answer is this uh, uh, raphe which is extending from the medial pterygoid plate to the mandible that is known as pterygomandibular raphe apart from that i told you it arises from the inner side of the mandible plus it also takes some fiber origin from the tongue so it is a quadrilateral muscle you can see that it is having the quadrilateral appearance and the superior constrictor passes backward from the pterygomandibular raphe while the buccinator passes forward from this raphe which i already explained now in this diagram of the mandible when you will see the inner side of the mandible you can see that this is your uh, inner surface of the uh, this uh, ramus and the body of the mandible and you have the space now this is space this red dot this red dot is showing your lower attachment of the pterygomandibular raphe now when you will see here the attachment of pterygomandibular raphe it is attached to the hemulus and in the lower part it is attached on the inner side of the mandible but where on the inner side on this dot on the inner side of your mandible now superior constrictor insertion pattern is the another important concept 
because when you will see the superior constrictor the fibers are going in upward direction fibers are going into the horizontal direction and fibers are going into the lower direction so you will have the three sets of the fiber now the first is the higher fibers the higher fibers are arching and they directly will get attached to the pharyngeal tubercle which is a bony point on the base of skull in occipital bone so this is the higher fibers and these fibers will get attached here now when you will see the higher most fiber you will find that there is a gap now this gap is present between the superior border of the superior constrictor and the base of the skull and we are saying this again and again that this muscular tube is not getting attached directly to the bone and you have the pharyngobasilar fascia that is going to fill this space now this space is having a one important name and that is known as sinus of morgagni so you have this question what is the name of this space that is between the base of skull and superior border of the superior constrictor muscle the space is known as sinus of morgagni the middle fibers are horizontal fibers and these middle fibers will meet with the fibers of the opposite side in the midline then you will have the lower most fibers and these lower most fibers are very deep they are fibers which extend at the back and as far as down at the level of the vocal fold and insert into the your raphe and lying within the middle constrictor why middle constrictor because i already told you that the lower part of the upper constrictor overlay by the upper part of the middle constrictor so this is your superior constrictor this is your middle constrictor so the lower fibers of your superior constrictor overlay by this upper part of middle constrictor so here is the overlapping which you can see here that overlapping is very well appreciable this is your middle constrictor and the lower fibers are entering inside but how they they will go they will go up to the level of vocal cord vocal cords are present here inside your thyroid cartilage vocal cords are present inside the thyroid cartilage so these fibers will go very deep till this vocal cord level so this is the important thing which you have to keep in mind that when we are reading the inferior constrictor you will realize that when the inferior constrictor is overlapping it is not only overlapping the fibers of your middle constrictor but these fibers are also going down into this inferior constrictor and what is the level level is vocal cord level clear then we have the middle constrictor now what is the origin of middle constrictor the middle constrictor fibers arise from the stylohyoid ligament now where is the stylohyoid ligament now this is your styloid process and this is your hyoid bone now in between you have the connection is known as stylohyoid ligament now this ligament is giving the origin to this muscle and the muscle is having narrow origin and it is spread out posteriorly that's why it is said that it is a fan shaped muscle it is a fan shaped muscle so it not only arising from this stylohyoid ligament but it also taking origin from the part of your hyoid bone that is your greater and lesser cornu then the fibers will fan out the upper fibers overlap the lower portion of the superior constrictor while lower fibers will go arch downward and they are overlapped by the inferior constrictor and they are actually merging with the fibers of superior constrictor till the level of vocal cord so they sweep posteriorly and diverge widely that's why it is said that it is a fan shaped muscle so when you will see the insertion i told you that upper fibers they will sweep upward and they enclose the lower portion of the superior constrictor and they will insert into the median raphe so median raphe is here which is present in the posterior side of your pharyngeal wall and this raphe is extending from the pharyngeal tubercle above and it will uh, as you will go down the lowest fiber they arch down as far as the vocal fold i hope now it is understood why we are using the word vocal fold because vocal fold comes here and this is actually the origin of your inferior constrictor and this inferior constrictor is overlapping the lower part of the middle constrictor but you have to understand that up to what level the middle constrictor fibers remain inside the uh, inferior constrictor answer is up to the level of vocal fold and here not only the fibers of middle constrictor but the fibers of superior constrictor is also reaching in this area 
so this is the important thing now the second thing is that you are having a gap between here here between the uh, thyroid and hyoid bone now the anterior gap between the middle and inferior constrictor that means this is the inferior constrictor uh, this is the middle constrictor this is the hyoid bone this is the thyroid cartilage now this gap is filled by a membranous layer and this membranous layer is known as thyrohyoid membrane then we have the third constrictor that is inferior constrictor now inferior constrictor is very important because the inferior constrictor is thickest constrictor of the pharynx now it is having the two part thyropharyngeus and cricopharyngeus now when you will see the posteriorly placement of the constrictor you can see that posteriorly they are making a tube and in midline you will find a thickening is known as pharyngeal raphe and all the muscles are inserting posteriorly into this raphe but the important thing which you can see that when you will see this inferior constrictor now inferior constrictor is having two part this is your thyropharyngeus this is your cricopharyngeus and what you are able to appreciate that the lower border of this pharyngeal raphe ends here that means the cricothyroid muscle is not having any attachment with the pharyngeal raphe so this is the question of your exam you have to understand this line that this cricothyroid does not have any attachment with pharyngeal raphe and here you can see that these are the two part that is the thyropharyngeus in upper part and cricopharyngeus or the circularly placed muscle in the lower part so what is the thyropharyngeus origin so when you will see the origin it arises from the oblique line on the thyroid cartilage now in in this diagram you can see that this is the thyroid cartilage and on thyroid this is the oblique line now this oblique line is providing origin to the fibers which are known as fibers of inferior constrictor or thyropharyngeus and there is one more important uh, origin point that is the fibrous arch so this is the fibrous arch now this fibrous arch is actually lies on outer surface of the muscle is known as cricothyroid muscle so when you are reading the origin of the thyropharyngeus muscle thyropharyngeus muscle major origin from the oblique line plus there is a small arch present on the outer surface of cricothyroid muscle now the middle and upper fibers sweep posteriorly and superiorly and overlap the lower border of the middle constrictor that we know the telescopic arrangement so the upper fibers which are going upward overlapping the lower fibers of your middle constrictor and not only the middle constrictor but they are also uh, overlapping the lower most fibers of superior constrictor which are ending up to the level of your vocal fold while after overlapping the posteriorly they will go and insert into the muscle uh, of opposite side into this raphe that is known as pharyngeal raphe its most inferior fibers now this is important that the most inferior fibers are horizontal now they these fibers are horizontal and these fibers are not overlapping any other muscle so the telescopic arrangement and at this point so there is no overlapping and these horizontal fibers blend with the uh, this median fibrous raphe on the posterior side of your pharynx so in this diagram you can see that this is the end of this your median raphe and the inferior border of your thyropharyngeus is not overlapping any other area and this is your median raphe which is a continuous structure on the posterior wall of your pharynx now what about the cricopharyngeus now cricopharyngeus is round and it is thicker than the flat sheet of other constrictor it extends uninterruptedly from one side of the cricoid arch to the other around the pharynx and it does not end in a raphe posteriorly now this line is most commonly asked in exam that which of the part of constrictor does not have attachment to the pharyngeal raphe answer is your cricopharyngeus part now here you can see that this is the lower end of the raphe and this is the cricopharyngeus which is having a complete uninterrupted course it is arising from one side making a complete circle and going on the other side otherwise what is happening about the other muscle they are coming from one half they are coming from the other half and they are forming this kind of the raphe on posterior side but here 
this kind of intermingling is not there the single fiber is going through and through and it is making a complete posterior part of the muscle so there is no rafe in this cricopharyngeus on the posterior aspect the muscle act as a sphincter at the lower extent of the pharynx and it continue with the circular muscle coat of the esophagus it is uh, impart some resistance to the passage of the endoscope so when we will pass the endoscope for the examination of the upper git at that time sometimes the surgeon feel a uh, resistance and that resistance is actually provided by this cricopharyngeus muscle the closure of cricopharyngeus is important because it prevent the air to being sucked into the esophagus when intrathoracic pressure fall and it allow the air to be sucked into the trachea so this is its functional role it's important to prevent the entry of air inside the esophagus the junction between the oblique fibers of thyropharyngeus and the circular fibers or horizontal fibers of cricopharyngeus are not overlapping and that's why there is a potential weakness is present on the posterior or back surface in the midline of the pharynx and that is known as clehens dehensis now here you can see that you have the horizontal or the circular fibers and these are the fibers of your cricopharynx and you have this area these are the fibers of your thyropharynx so because the overlapping or telescopic arrangement is not there this weak portion this weak triangular area which you are able to appreciate here is become the site and where sometimes the area is become the site for the production of the inner mucosa and this space is known as clehens dehensis through this weak area sometimes the pouch of the mucosa may become protrude and that is known as pharyngeal diverticulum now what is the cause of the protrusion of the mucosa the answer is the inappropriate contraction of the cricopharynx and why there is a inappropriate contraction of cricopharynx answer is neuromuscular incoordination because of the neuromuscular incoordination that means when the thyropharyngeus is contracting at that time the cricopharynx relax so the food will go down but suppose there is a in coordination between the relaxation due to neuromuscular uh, in coordination what will happen if the thyropharyngeus cricopharyngeus contract simultaneously the intrapharyngeal pressure becomes so high and once the pressure becomes so high the mucosa will protrude through this gap as this gap is not having any support in form of overlapping structure of the muscle that's why this is the area of weakness in this pharyngeal tube and this weak area is known as clehens dehensis then longitudinal muscle longitudinal muscles are three in nature stylopharyngeus palatopharyngeus and salpingopharyngeus now you have to just read uh, you have to keep this uh, concept in mind that when you have the stylopharyngeus now this is the only muscle which is not taking origin inside the pharynx why because the word is saying stylopharyngeus it is coming from styloid process and then you can see that it is entering in through this point it is not the muscle which is arising inside the pharynx it is a muscle which is arising outside the pharynx then it entering into the pharynx and you can see that this is your middle constrictor so it is passing through the gap of superior and middle constrictor so when you will put the cup inside the cup at that time you have a gap now through this gap of superior and middle constrictor you will find that the stylopharyngeus enters in, inside the pharynx so this is the most important question in your exam that which muscle of the pharynx does not take origin inside answer is stylopharyngeus it take origin from outside from the styloid process so if you will see this diagram in this diagram also you can see that this is your middle constrictor now this is your middle constrictor and this is your lower border of inferior superior constrictor now through this gap now here you can see that the muscle is entering inside and this is the muscle is known as stylopharyngeus so stylopharyngeus is uh, visible in this uh, sagittal section of your head and neck below this border of superior constrictor 
Why? Because it is taking origin outside and it is entering through this gap. That's why it is appearing in the lower part of the pharynx, not in the upper part of pharynx. Remaining two muscles, salpingopharynges and palatopharynges. If you will see the origin, so salping means tube. So this is your auditory tube and from this you will have a long muscle which is arising and going downward. This is the salpingopharynges. The other muscle is known as palatopharynges which is taking origin from this palate and it is going downward and this is your palatopharynges. So when you will see the arrangement of longitudinal muscle, the uppermost origin is from the salpingopharynges, then you will have palatopharynges and stylopharynges is entering into the pharynx from outside because it is arising from the stylet process and it enters into the pharynx through the gap between the superior and middle constrictor. So in this chart, if you will see the origin, the stylopharynges arises from the medial side of the stylet process, the salpingopharynges arises from the pharyngotympanic tube or the auditory tube, while your palatopharynges arises from the palatine aponeurosis which is a fibrous framework of your soft palate and all of these three muscles will go and insert in the posterior wall posterior border of your thyroid cartilage in your pharyngeal wall so what is the point of insertion in the po on the posterior border of thyroid cartilage which you can see in this diagram that this is the posterior border of thyroid cartilage and it receives the common insertion of all these three longitudinal muscle through the pharyngeal wall. So this is the important thing. Now the last thing is the nerve supply of the pharynx. In the first part I already explained but again we revise that all the muscles of the pharynx supplied by pharyngeal plexus except stylopharynges. Stylopharynges is supplied by the glossopharyngeal nerve and the glossopharyngeal nerve is a ninth cranial nerve and if you remember the third pharyngeal arch if you remember the third pharyngeal arch in the development of head and neck, you realize that the third pharyngeal arch now is the glossopharyngeal now and the glossopharyngeal now supplies the stylopharynges. That's why the third arch muscle is stylopharynges. So you can keep this thing in mind with the help of embryology. Remaining muscle are supplied by the pharyngeal plexus and there is an additional nerve supply to your lowermost part of uh, cricopharynges and that is from the internal and external laryngeal nerve. Now here the most important thing which you have to remember about the motor supply that the motor supply which is entering into the pharyngeal plexus is actually the pharyngeal fibers of the vagus nerve and these are not actually the fibers of vagus nerve. They are actually the fibers derived from the cranial part of accessory now which is known as pharyngeal branch of vagus now. So at the end of this class of the constrictor muscles and the longitudinal muscles of the pharynx, first and most important thing you have to keep in mind that the constrictor muscles are the circular muscles and these circles are incomplete anteriorly they are open, they are receiving the three opening and these constrictors are having the anterior attachment to the bones and ligament and posteriorly these constrictor insert into a median raphe. The another important thing is that they have the telescopic arrangement. Then you have the weakest part in the posterior wall of the inferior constrictor that is known as clehens dehensis. And the important thing which you have to always keep in mind that there is a one muscle which is not the part of pharyngeal origin that is stylopharynges which arises from outside and later on it enters inside the pharynx through a gap between the superior constrictor and middle constrictor. And the important about the nerve supply that all the muscles of the pharynx supplied by pharyngeal plexus except stylopharynges which is supplied by the ninth cranial nerve which is glossopharyngeal. The nerve which is supplying the motor part to the pharyngeal muscle is known as pharyngeal branch of the vagus nerve which is actually carrying the fibers of cranial root of spinal nerve, spinal accessory nerve. So this is all about the constrictors of pharynx. Thank you.